Merciless destroyers of temples and monuments, the Jade Obelisk are a menace to all who do not worship the Malevolent God, a mysterious change organ known only as the Speaker in the Stone. Blasphemous artificers skilled in stonecraft, these masked cultists are each cursed to slow but inevitable petrification. Acutely aware of their finite time as living flesh, they are single-minded in their purpose to desecrate the idols of all false gods before their mortal bodies succumb to the curse. The Azkurgan Trueblades are an order of vampiric warrior monks who seek to master their bloody curse. Dedicated to self-discipline and martial excellence, these soul-blight vampires seek out the mightiest beasts across the realm to test their skills and slake their thirst. For as Kurgans disdain the blood of lesser victims, even starving themselves to the point of savage madness. Today's Warhammer Age of Sigma Warcry Battle Report will be a thousand renown game. We'll be using the decks of cards to randomly generate a mission for our game. I'm going to be playing with the Jade Obelisk and Lauren is going to be playing with the Azkurgan Trueblades. And so here we have a thousand renown of the Jade Obelisk. In our dagger, we have two of the defaces with bows. We also have a desecrator with the iconoclast war pick. Then in our shield, we are going to have the Nephrite Priestess, the Obelisk Bearer, and the Idolark, along with a desecrator with Statue Smasher Hammer. And then lastly, in our hammer, we have another Statue Smasher Hammer defacer. And then we've got two of the little defacers as well with Stonecutter tools. And then we have a thousand renown of the Azkurgan True Blades. To start with, in our dagger, we have the Azkurgan Exemplar. We then also have one of the Azkurgan Astics as well. And then we have an Azkurgan Acolyte with Throat Taker. In the shield, we then have another Throat Taker wielding Azkurgan Acolyte along with the Cursed Blood. And then in the hammer, we have the Azkurgan there. We th the Azkurgan Pariah, we then also have another Azkurgan Astic, this time with the Charnel Mace, and we also have an Azkurgan Acolyte with a Bone Hilt Falchion. And so we are all deployed down on the table for the Jade Obelisk. We have our Eidlark, the Stone Bearer, we then have the Priestess, and one of the Desecrators. We then have the Defaces and another Desecrator over there. Meanwhile, for the Azkurgans, we have the Cursed Blood and one of the Acolytes. And then another Acolyte, the Astic, and the Pariah on that flank. Today's video is brought to you by Gap Games, a fantastic retailer in Australia for a variety of different miniature war games. If you'd like to help support the channel, we have an affiliate link where by clicking on and purchasing, you'll help support the channel, but you'll also help support Gap Games, which is a fantastic servant to the community. Priority for turn one, this will be for the Jade Obelisk, so I've got double ones, that's it. And for the Azkurgans, what have we got there? Um, double twos, that's it. Four singles as well. All right, so we're both choosing not to spend our wild dice, which means the turn will go to a roll-off. So uh, for me, I've got a four. And for the Azkogans, you've got a three. So I'm going to get the first activation. Uh, so my first movement, with my mighty movement of three, I am going to move the Desecrator up with a double move. And so you're just going to make a single move with the Cursed Blood up there. Now you're going to use a weight on your second action. What that means is it actually just gives up your action. It's pretty much a pass. does nothing. My second activation is just the Nephrite Priestess making a double move up. And then over to you. And then you just make a single move with your Azkogan Astic there with the Charnel Mace. Right, next up we've just had the Obelisk Bearer make a double move as well. And so we then just have another move there with your Acolyte. A lot of movement on this first round, really. All right, so we're going to at least move somewhat closer with a double move with the Desecrator. Next, we have your Acolyte with the Bone Hilt to Blade move up. So I like is then just going to make a move up. So you're just keeping the Pariah there in reserve. So I've just got my last couple of moves to do over here. 
And so we just end with a double move, the two defaces moving over there. And so that will be the end of round one. Not an awful lot happening in this, but everything sort of getting close to getting in combat. We'll now have reserves come in for turn two. And so reserves have come on the table. I've got the two defaces with bows and another one of the desk craters. And then you have your as a Kurgan Exemplar, an Astic, and another Acolyte come in at the top of the table as well. All right, so priority for turn two. This is for the Jade Obelisk. I will have a double five. That's it for singles. And then go for the as Kurgans. Uh, you've got a double four and a double three. That'll be that. Alrighty, so I've chosen to spend one of my wild dust to make it double four, so I've got three singles now. Uh, you have two singles, but you have turned a triple four there with one of your wild dice, so you've both still got one in the bank. That means I will have the first activation this round. Alright, so my first activation, I'm going to have the uh, defacer here move into your Azkogan Exemplar, and I'm going to make an attack. Alright, so you have Defense 4, I have Strength 4, so these will be needing 4s. Uh, so they will all succeed and a crit there. I am then going to spend a double. And so with that attack, it be a whopping 9 damage on your Azkirian Exemplar. So you are up next for the activation. Alright, so you've made a move with the Curse Blood, and then you're going to attack my Defacer. Alright, so you have 4 attacks, you need 3s with your Strength 5 against my Defense 4. Uh, so that'll be two and a crit there. And so that is eight wounds on him. He's only got two left. Uh, not looking good for him. Alrighty, so my desk crater is then going to go in. I'm going to spend a double for rock shattering blow. This allows me to add one to my strength, but also add one point of damage to bow all my hits and critical hits dealt by this fighter. And so strength six versus defense four. I'm going to need threes to wound you now. Wow. Well, that was a great use of my double. And so you are going to move your pariah over there and just moving five. That's him done for the round. We're then going to move one of the desecrators up. Your Astic then moves up as well. So the defacer with bow is going to shoot into the back of your acolyte there. Uh, so I have two attacks. I am strength three. The acolyte is defense three. So I need fours. Hey, I got one and a crit. That'll be four points of damage. Right, your acolyte with Bone Hilt Blade then moves into the Desecrator. So you are going to need threes with your strength five. Uh, both, so that'll be two regular hits. The Nephrite Pleistess will come in. Uh, she is only strength three, uh, so she's going to need fours against your acolyte. Four attacks, so fours. That'll be one and the crit. So that will be a total of five damage with her crit. Uh, so that was that. You've now got nine wounds on that fighter there. All right, so the throat taker here is going to attack my desecrator. Uh, it comes in with his attacks. So you are strength three, uh, strength four. So you're going to need fours. How many dice? Uh, so you need fours, you need three dice. Uh, so there's one and a crit. And then I'm going to move in and fight back against your Acolyte. So I am strength four. You are defense three on the Acolyte. So I will need threes. Uh, one in a crit again. All right, so this throat check here, you're within three inch of my Acolyte there. Uh, not my Acolyte, your Acolyte is within three inch of my Defacer. Uh, so you need fives because I'm over the barricade. You got the crit, which will take me out. And so after that, you're gonna spend a double there for moment of savagery. Now, you do have to roll the dice on this. On a one or two, it will not go off thanks to our Celestial Eclipse twist. And a two, so no. You spend your double and it does not go off. And so he just made a move then after that instead. Uh, so I'll get my next activation. And so I just move up my next disc crater, which just leaves your Astic to make his move. And so you just move up your Astic after that. I've then just got my last activations. So the Acolyte makes a move and will attack into your Acolyte there. Uh, so I need fours. Got one, that'll be a point of damage. And then my last move, the Bow Wielder just moves up as does the Obelisk Bearer and that will be the end of round two. Mm -hmm. 
Today's battle report is also brought to you by Mithras Games. Fantastic tabletop wargaming mats out of New Zealand. Now, Mithras Games has a variety of different mats. We've got the fantastic Desert Red, the nice Tundra Green, and the Frosty Ice Blue here as well. All of these mats are a really nice high quality, generally very similar to how you would get your uh, mouse pads for your mats. Uh, but fantastic high quality mats, we love them. Mithras Games are a fantastic supporter of the channel. You can pop on over to their website, especially if you're a local to Australia or New Zealand, they're a fantastic company to help support. And so round three priority, this is for me. Uh, I got double one, double three. Yeah, yeah I got more than one. Uh, for the Azkurgans, you got a double five in there, and that's it. All right, so wild dice, I've spent mine, so you spent both of them to go with four singles, and then you've got a triple and a double there after your spends. You've got the most dice, so you get the first activation. All righty, so the Cursed Blood is going to attack me. I'm going to use a reaction on your first attack, which is the Curse of Jade, so you're minus one damage, but you do need threes to wound. So just two, so these will now do only one point of damage each. Uh, so you're going to attack again. I'm not going to use the reaction on this one. And that was a good call, because that's another two points of damage. Uh, no, four points of damage this time. Alrighty, so I'm going to go with the uh, Desecrator then, and he's going to use Rock Shattering Blow. I'm attacking into the Acolyte with five wounds on them. I'm also yeah, going to use the Desecrating Blow for some extra damage for a double. Uh, so... Three, needing threes to strength six, and that'll all do it. So these will now be, with that, that'll be nine points of damage from him. And then we'll put our next attack into the Curse Blood. So we are strength five, defense four, so we need threes again. Uh, so that's time, that'll be 11 points of damage on the Curse Blood. All right, Astic then moves in. You're gonna try and take the Desecrator off the table. Your strength is with the Glade. Alright, so two attacks, strength five with your Glaive. Uh, that's a double crit and that'll definitely take him out of action. And so rolling to see whether the ability works. Uh, three plus it will. So this will be my Shattering Blow. So I've got three attacks, needing threes on the curse Blood. Oh no. Uh, so that still will be four points of damage though. Right, so your Acolyte is going to attack into my Idolark next. Uh, so, the Acolyte with a Bone Hilt, you are strength five, so you are needing threes. Got one, so that will be two points of damage. So you can attack again. You do need to get a crit and a hit here to take me out. And that definitely will not do it, because that's a one. And so, four points of damage though. All right, so the I like is going to attack back. The bird did not like being hit. Uh, so we need fours. And the bird absolutely tortures him. And so, vengeance. The Aztec moves up and is going to make an attack with his Charnel Mace. Two attacks, strength six base, so three certainly. Uh, one, uh, which is only three damage, which will leave me on a wound. Right, going to activate the defacer here next, so I do need to roll fours, of which I get two, so that will be four points of damage on your beast. All right, I'm going to try and use a double then for my hammering strikes, my second attack, because I did wounds, I can now add damage to them. So I do, I get it. Uh, so now I'm going to attack all these with plus two damage. I need fours again. I got a crit in there, so that's definitely him dead, because that is five damage alone. Uh, so, nine damage there in total. And take out the doggo. Alright, so your Ash Kogan example moves up. You're going to use a triple uh, against my Desecrator using Perfect Strike, which means your crits work on fives. Uh, you are straight six. Uh, so, you need threes, but fives do crits. No crits, but you do get all the damage. And so you still take me out because three hits is still 12 damage with the Exemplar. All right, so this fighter here is going to double shoot into the Aztec. I'm not going to kill him with one shot. I can't possibly kill him. So I'm just going to roll both shots at once. Uh, so I need... I need fives with the bow. I got one, so he takes a point of damage. 
Alrighty, so just the Pariah moving up as well, keeping him in reserve there. The second Anathite boat will go into that fighter as well, rolling both. However, that will do some damage. Uh, that will be eight points of damage. All right, so your throw taker is just going to make a wake, which means I'll go with my next fighter, which will be him. Uh, so we're going to try and roll the dice for my double. I get it again. Rock Shattering Blow is working. And so we need threes, and we got a double crit. And so your final move is the throw taker over there. So I've got the Obelisk Bearer next. <laughs> Today's video is brought to you by Baron of Dice, a premium wargaming dice that make your table come alive. Now, if you're looking for some great dice to suit an army you play on the tabletop in a variety of different games, go to Baron of Dice and check out their website. You can also use our discount code down in the video's description, which will help support the channel, but also nab you a cheap little discount. The dice you see pictured here are the official dice for Parabellum's last argument of King's Conquest or buy them as well, which you can find on the Parabellum e-store as well. And so, I'm just going to move the Obelisk Bearer back, so we go into the last round of the game. It's definitely not looking good for the Azkurgans here, because I've got a lot of fighters near the middle. Uh, priority, I will get a double six. Alrighty, so priority for you. Uh, you got a triple one. And so, the priority for last turn will be a roll-off. I've got a four... You have a two, so I'm certainly going to fight your Azkogan Exemplar first. All right, so I'm going to attack first of all. Uh, so this will mean your toughness of the Azkogan Exemplar is four, so I need fours. Uh, um, Yahtzee. <laughs> and so just to make sure you die on the next round, I'm going to try and spend a double. And I rolled a four plus. I get it again. Uh, so all his next hits on his second attack will do an extra three points of damage from hammering blows. So fours. I got nothing. I just rolled four threes on the next roll. So you live. So there's Koken Exemplar is going to try and remove my model. Uh, so attacking back then. So three attacks, you need threes. Uh, so that'll be a crit, so that won't take me out though, that'll do 5 points of damage, because he's undamaged. So you will need to attack me again. I will be. And that, that would have removed me on the first turn if you had to roll that first. And so in return, I'm going to shoot him in the back. If I get a crit, I kill you, or if they're both... Uh, no, I need to get a crit, because I'm only 1-3 on the damage. So I need a crit on this. No, I got nothing. Alright, so Vengeance shall be yours. You're going to attack the Bow Wielder. So you've got two attacks. Uh, you need threes. They both go. Alright, so you did four damage to my bow. My other bow is going to move next. Alright, my second bow. Last chance to try and kill your dude. I need a six. No, oh, I saw that six there for a second. And so, it now really comes down to can this dude kill someone and not die in return? That is the big thing. So you've got to move him forward. He has to move forward to try and kill. All right, so you are going to use a quad for worthy foes. You've moved up your fighter here. You're going to attack the Desecrator. Now, there is reasoning behind this. Yes, he would be he's harder to kill than the I like, but if you don't kill the Desecrator, you probably die in return anyway. So, you've got an extra two attacks, which takes you to five attacks thanks to worthy foe, and then you now need to roll at least two sixes on these five dice, or one six, and the rest must be wounds. Because that would... So, go for it. One, two, th he does it. All right, so the Nephrite Priestess, we are going to attack. We need a good roll. That is not enough, so I'm not even going to bother keeping damage score there. Because uh, I pretty much need to kill you. Uh, so, your dude comes in, is pretty much how this goes. And then I've got one last chance to win the game. So, he moves up now. And we now go to see if he can kill. I need to pretty much roll quad sixes here. And I do not, uh, which will mean I have one, two, three, four. You have one, two, three, four. And the game will be a draw. 
And that's the end of the video. We hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and also drop a comment down below letting us know what you thought about the video. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our fine little community here at Sinful Gaming, we have a Discord server linked down in the video's description. Also linked down in the video's description are the best ways to help support the channel. You can use one of our affiliate links to Gap Games or Element Games if you're in Australia or the United Kingdom, or you can subscribe to our YouTube members or Patreon, or grab some merch from our merch source on Teespring or Ko-fi, all the best ways to help support the channel. As a special thanks to all our Patreon and YouTube members, we'd like to give them all a shout out. So thank you to our Patreons, Broken Chef, Andy C, Grimskold, Colorblind Magic, Benjamin Swallows, James Cater, Mark Harvey, Domir, Average Wargamer, JJ Austrian, Cure Dynamic, Andrew Bowen, Outer and Shot First, Kenny Lyle, and Soren. And to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny 84, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, James Tillman, Disco, John Castle, and Gargamel196. Thank you all once again for watching. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Stay safe, everyone. Stay well. And most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.